Bonjour. Um, I'm going to make some changes. Uh, you might notice my base uh, has changed a little bit. It is so much, so much more secure. Um, as you can see here, look at this. It's virtually a fortress now. Who left that open? Right. What we're going to look at today is the splitter. So all the videos up till now have looked at connecting one thing to your power source. Um, obviously, if you've got a base a little bit bigger than a starter base, then you're going to want to be able to include several different uh, features, electrical features uh, amongst in your base. And that's where the splitter comes in. So my electrics are exactly as they were in my last video when I did the automatic lighting. Um, my means of getting upstairs has changed, but what's upstairs is exactly the same. So we've still got our uh, solar panels blocked off by these uh, shields. Um, everything else is as is. The only thing that's been removed is the blocker. So what we're going to do is, instead of the blocker here, we're going to have a splitter. And I'm just going to put the splitter next to the switch and connect these two up. By the way, if you're thinking, oh my god, he's going to do another time lapse with the bloody lights, don't worry. You're just going to have to trust that adding in this splitter makes absolutely no difference to the current setup. Um, the stage we're at now is basically taking the things that we learnt and putting them all in one base. One fantastic base. There is no kit. Right. Where was I? So let's put this blocker down. Um, I'm going to put the blocker uh, right here. Um, this room is going to get a bit full. Uh, you'll notice that I've put a, a tool cupboard in here because uh, I don't want people stealing my solar panels. So we're going to put the blocker right next to the splitter. And we're going to run power from one of the outputs. Straight into the blocker, just like we did last time. And from here, we're going to go straight back out to our lights. So absolutely nothing has changed apart from the inclusion of the splitter. You will just have to take my word for that. Come on game. Okay, we'll go from the... Oh, I see, they're already connected. Fantastic. So this is now exactly as it was before. The only thing that's missing is the block pass-through. So let's get that back in place. And... Um... beautiful thing. I've no idea where that's going to uh, connect to. That's a bit longer than I usually go for. There you go. So we are now back to where we were the other day. Um, what I'm going to do now is just very very quickly add in 
Um, oh, what am I going to add in? Let's add the um, proximity sensors so that we can see if um, people are outside the base. Okay, so um, okay, so let's grab a whole bunch of these blue lights. You're probably thinking, why do you need all these blue lights? You'll see. Um, also, got two of these HB, HF, blah, blah, blah things. Let's put these sensors outside, same as before. In the same place, in fact. It's awkward. And let's have a variety of lights. So I'm going to have all three of these in a line on this wall, uh, ceiling. And we're going to go from and in fact let's, um, let's get another splitter and I'm just going to put that next to this one. Okay so what we're going to do this might be start to look complicated but really if you think of each individual c circuit on its own it can be very easy so all the splitters are doing uh, are allowing you to add more simplicity if that makes any sense at all so from here we're going to go across powering and then from here I'm going to take one of these spurs into the power in and then with the power out We're going to come back across the ceiling into here and then from the pass through to the next light and then same again. So what we've got now is the sensor connected to these three lights and um, the reason for this is this sensor will pass through the same value of power as the number of people it detects so if you're inside your base and one of these lights is on then there's one person outside if there's two, then there's two people outside. And if there's three, well, you can see where I'm going with this. There's three people outside. So I'm not going to bother connecting up the other side just now, but that gives you a lot of information about what's going on outside. Situational awareness is, is massive is a massive benefit in Rust. So knowing that there's three people outside your base is the difference between sitting inside and protecting your loot or running out with a gun and trying to take somebody out. So if, if you have 
that situational awareness. Or if somebody is outside talking to you on voice chat and they're saying that they're on their own and two of these lights are on, or three, you know they're lying. So um, you can thank me later. Ah, hello. Um, can you do me a favour? And and just uh, run around my fantastic base, uh, maybe three or four times, just all the way around. Um, okay, cool. Give me a minute. I'll tell you when. Okay, you can start running. Thanks. Oh, what's this? I hear I hear an intruder. Where might he be? It's a mystery to me. So anyway, as I was saying, when somebody's outside that side of your base, one light will flash. Sadly, I can't corral two two people to prove my point here, but uh, you'll trust me. Trust me. Poor old bald. He's getting a stack of exercise. Anyway, I'm going to stop this video here and put put this poor guy out of his misery. Um, I hope that's been helpful, and um, yeah, uh, just just let me know in the comments what you think, and uh, I'll hopefully see you again soon. Bye.